guys again here we go with Frank and we've uh, persuaded him to do the uh, the 25 questions I'm looking forward to this one mate <laughs> right so we'll go with the uh, the serious ones <laughs> go on okay. then hit me yeah <laughs> what's your favourite venue this is really serious Ooh. what in England UK yes UK uh, oh, I've got loads happy memories loads but uh, I'll tell you what uh, one of my favourites currently is uh, Bluebell Lakes and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. because there's some beautiful fishing there and uh, big mates with Tony runs it and he does the motorcycle racing still at 62 and I used to be motorbike racing so we have a big old chin wag I can do what the hell I want there and uh, none of this chicken rigs and rules and this that and all that old box yeah. <coughs> it's just great and uh, it's busy as hell yeah, but I can just go and do my own thing and uh, I meet a lot of people have a nice little social and I've caught some tremendous fish on there. And, you know, it, it floats my boat, beautiful looking. That's, that's what we'll go there for. Yeah, yeah. That's where we'll go fishing yeah. for, ain't it? What's your favourite capture? Uh, what fish? <laughs> no. We'll talk about yeah. that off camera. Yeah, yeah. On camera, uh, yeah, fish. Oh, bloody hell, that's a straight. I've had, I've had so many amazing ones, really. Uh, wow. I suppose the first 40 ever caught was a good one. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I was on El It was the there was a big click on there, and they were all like big gang of mates that fished it for 20 years. I don't know if you know some, but it's got little plateaus on it, and it's very deep water, or quite deep water, you know, 30, 40 foot. Yeah. And there's a few little like spires that come about the size of this table, up into about 15 feet of water, and you have to marker it to death when you knew there. There's no other way to find them, you know. And they all knew them had the lines marks and that. And they were seeing me frothing it to death and they were all like, eh, you know, I'll toss it this, that, and that. And I used boilies and they were all using uh, hemp and car. So I thought, oh, bollocks this, I'll use boilies, do my thing. Yeah. And they were all taking the piss, saying, oh, you, you have to use hemp and car, you know, you have to come around right away thinking. The first time I lost a fish and that was it. And my, my mate caught on the, on the boilie right at the end of the session. And then the second time I went, says let's turn up in the dark so we can hear him crashing to find them so we turned up and I waited all night so he got light because we're on the spot where they were crashing and then basically uh, he just did podcast based you know with bags my mate and I waited because I knew I didn't want to be in deep water so as soon as it was coming light I had a marker out and I did a tentative sort of three rod job 50 base on each found some good spots and he just wakes up and does a yaw and then one of mine busted off behind him and it, the first four and it was one in particular that they all wanted to catch them sort of guys yeah it's good for then, is it? yeah no the song's all right yeah, yeah it was good <laughs> that's a good tactic though isn't it yeah, like, yeah. get there early listen yeah. to what's going on yeah 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 okay have you any targets coming up <coughs> um no i don't i don't really have targets i'd like to catch a seven uh, despite all my travels all over the place i've never caught a seven pound yeah. I mean, people think I'm abroad all the time and a full-time bank. Oh, you tan? Nah, that's a bit, that's, well, I, I won't that's even say what fake, I was That's not fake, is it? Come on. No, I'm not. <laughs> Do you think I'm Julian Cundiff? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Julio. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we die this. No, so, uh, no, I'd like to get to sent me, but I'm not into paying for these, you know, places where you go over and uh, every throw a coke and you catch a big and it's a piece of this. Yeah. It's not for me, I like the big massive reses like Orient and uh, Shantycock and stuff like that and then the fish tend to be a little bit smaller but they're more, uh, uh, yeah, more satisfactory when you yeah, catch them, so yeah. that's how I see it. Well, um, where are we now, I don't know where we are, I'm, just getting, I'm getting into this so much, this yeah, 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 that's brilliant. If you could have your ideal venue, what would it be like and what's the stock? Well, I suppose... It'd be like uh, Lake Reduta with an absolute brilliant hotel that was like some, a Baywatch. You'd have swims to die for with absolute whackers all over the shop. The Carlsberg swim. Yeah, Carlsberg swim. It'd be tropical weather. You could sunbathe, come out of your budget smugglers, get a mega tad. So after about three or four days, you'd get the taste and fancy a few beers, a bit of Romanian two bugs, sail over to the hotel. There'd be a few treacles in there, and then all the rest is this. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you have your alarm with you, though? Not by the minute. 
<laughs> well, because we've just been to the uh, the next question is going to be really hard now because you've just been uh, exotic. Yes. On the way to this ideal lake of yours, you've got ten pound yeah. to buy some food for twenty four hours. Yeah. What's you spend it on? I like them Smith Square against <laughs> the salt. <song. laughs> Would they look right in this posh seven star? Have a bottle of whiskey and a couple of bags of crisps, and that'd be do me for this session. Yeah, because right? of where you're going. I'm not, to. I'm not a big fatty, so I don't eat that much. Carrots. And uh, I live on about 400 calories a day. <laughs> Some educated guy who I fish with worked it out, and I says, "Well, you know, I'm still here. I'm not, uh, you know, let's not eat, let's not even go into it. I'm if here." If you eat too much, you could knock your calories down in the hotel. Well, you don't look great when you got your kit off, do you? If you pull some looks. <laughs> Sensational. Yeah, in your budget smuggling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking, but <laughs> yeah. Right, and where are we now? Again, on, on, on. what's the worst thing you've seen while fishing the bank? Oh, I've seen some brilliant things. Uh, the worst thing. Yeah. Oh. I and it's not you in budget budget smuggling. No, no. <laughs> no, that'll be him over there. Isn't it? The, uh, <laughs> The worst thing I've seen is um, probably. Well, it wasn't bad. It was hilarious. There was uh, I was doing this uh, Sony challenge on Broadlands, and there was this guy there called Pete Bowden. I hope you're watching, Pete. And uh, he's a solicitor, and he's an absolute pisser. And he he had about 14 pints of cellar in the pub the night before. Albert Romp was in there, and everybody. And uh, we're like. Jesus Christ, look at him, he took it away. And he was like, oh, crap. We're lightweights compared with him. And he, he was still compass mentors, you know, he was with it. Yeah. Ish. And then he drove the car back to Broadlands. And uh, <laughs> we parked up in the car park, and all I could hear on that was him cracking ten at super. And I thought, fair play, he's bang on it. And uh, in the morning I woke up at six thinking, oh, I've got a thumping headache. Oh, Bowden's there, cracking more tenants, <laughs> passing them out and all that. Shit! He's drawing any son, do you want to eat them? And, no, I'm alright, thanks, Pete. And then, he, uh, he he did the draw, I'd never been to Broadlands before, and it was foggy. And he went, oh, I've got the pylon swim. I don't know what the bloody pylon swim's like. He's in this Foxhall Cavalier. And he went, jeez, I'm off. And he did a wheel spin and took off in this Foxhall Cavalier. I will, I? Fucking hell, look at the speed he's going. It went off like a rocket, but there's a dog bag in the uh, in the road apparently, the gravel track league under the bridge. I mean, I didn't know the place. So we see this brake light slam on, and then we see the car about 15 feet in the air. <laughs> and we're like, oh, look at that. It took off this massive bank, and then we see the jerk, <laughs> like a bit of a tsunami going in the lake. <laughs> so we're like, oh. So we kind of thought, we better go down on lock if he's got a seatbelt or if he's still alive. And we got there and just the arse end of this Cavalier's up in there like that. We're thinking, Pete, are you in there? Nothing. And it was just sort of kind of floating. And we're thinking, shit. Next minute, we hear a few big bangs and the back windscreen comes out. He kicked the back windscreen out. He comes doing the breaststroke coming out and we're like, you know. Anyway, he comes back to the bank, he goes, I'm still competing, I'm still competing. <laughs> so, yeah, they had to winch his car out with a big sort of, like, cable. Yeah. And it had ripped the sump off there, it occurred. And uh, his main concern was all his PVA bags, because it used to be the old Plum Royale boilers in, in solid bags had melted. He got this big bag of shit out, and it was just melted. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he left his car there and got a taxi home, he did. Yeah. Or I'll tell you, what are you? What is that the old one, the pub? I thought you were just going to say, kick the wind right in your head. No, no, nothing. <laughs> well, well if, that, that was quite good, yeah. yeah. Well, if that's the worst thing you've seen on the bank, yeah. the next question is, what's the funniest thing you've seen on the bank? Oh, there's too many. Oh, right? just, a, just a funny right. story. Uh, <clears throat> I suppose... I wrote it in the book, actually, so... Oh, so, we'll, so you going to leave that one? No, there? no, no, I'll tell you. Yeah. What happened was, I was on Reeds, me, in Cheshire, and it's like... A bit ultra cult, you know, it's the northern sort of cart mecca, and everyone creeps around quiet and that. And we got this guy from Kent, I won't mention his name because it'll spare his embarrassment. And he's a, we nicknamed him Hooray Henry, he had a few bob. Well, he was loaded and he had a business, and he, but he was very arty farty and uh, he never actually was used to manual work. And we used to have them old uh, brollies, you know, a 50 inch brolly yeah, yeah. or a 45 inch with an overwrap on it. We'd had a red hot summer in 1986. I don't know, 85 it was. 
and the ground was baked rock hard and the lake was really down. And you used to get, you know where you get the old umbrella poles and you get that mark on you, know, you're trying to get yeah, the umbrella yeah, pole and working your way. And I got all my gear in two rods out, fishing happily away, thinking, really, no one's going to turn up now. And then he turns up and comes across like a, a mule with all this shit on his back and buckets of hemp and all sorts. And I thought, oh no, it's him. And he's like that, trying to get his umbrella pole in to do his thing. Anyway. I say, Frank, Frank, I can't get my umbrella pole can you help me with it? I went, get on with it. He went, you're one of them sort of strong manual types, can you help? I went, off. <laughs> so he's messing about for ages, and then I thought, what's he doing here now? Anyway, I left him to it, I'm doing a brew, got my rods in good spots, drew a bite, and I start hearing this bonky noise, like someone hitting some of the wood. So, what I've seen, I could not believe, he got his umbrella pole partially started in. He found a piece of an old wooden platform that had been in the lake for about 10 years, you know, rotten wood yeah, like yeah. this. So he got it under his ass. he's got an hand there on the side of it, and he's doing it, he's going, like that, bang, he opened down, <laughs> with the umbrella pole driving it in. I thought, that looks dodgy. <laughs> so he's just getting in full motion, banging it like that, and then he heard a splintering sound and a crack, and then he heard him scream, and he was like, ah! His eyes were popping out like a dog having shit. <laughs> right, and I'm like, fucking hell. And I thought, <laughs> he's like that. <laughs> I'm like, you all right, mate? <laughs> I spat my tail. I was like, pissed myself off. I'm like, right. He went, you sit me. You did have And I'm like, going, it's in you. He went, it's in my fucking ass. <laughs> I went, oh shit. How far? <laughs> It must be at least 10 inches! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pissing myself. He went, <laughs> he's, he's like shot like that. And I'm going, fucking hell. So he goes like that, he goes, lifts <laughs> 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 himself up. Then it, he pulled himself out of it. He went, <laughs> he fell like a tripod with his legs up in the air, with his head on the floor. And then started blubbering like a baby crying. I'm like, you alright, mate? Your battery is still on, isn't it? Oh, you alright, mate? You alright, mate? He went, I'm in agony. He says, will you have a look? So he, pulls, <laughs> <laughs> him. So he pulls his strides down. All right. He's got a big fat ass. His ass is up in the air. I thought, oh, shit. It, <laughs> wasn't, it wasn't a hole in one. He'd, he'd missed just how he right. And he caught his balls. So it nicked his balls. Do you know if you get one of them sort of U-shaped chisels, the old wood chisels, yeah. it looked like one of them had driven its way down that. You know, I don't know what you call it. We used to call it Biffin's Bridge, actually, with the women. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's skidding its way down and then disappeared up in tradesmen. Oh, and uh, then it shot up and I thought, oh shit. Did you have that hooky guy, did I didn't, didn't go into detail, do you know what I mean? It was pretty gruesome. And it was like, it was pissing me blood. And I thought, shit. He says, huh, will you take me to hospital? I went, fucking hell. We were in the old Kevin Maddox army jerseys and all the yeah. camo gear. <laughs> His ass is ripped to shreds. I thought, how's this good looking, Macclesfield? <laughs> <laughs> right, after that now, we've had a few swags of beer and then we're back on it again now after that. Okay. <laughs> if you could change one thing in your fishing past, what would it be? Um, nothing. Nothing? No. Is that easy? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you why. What I would have done was could change something. I got the uh, certain things that came up with off my own back, like single up page, floros. Yeah. I, I was, without sounding twat, I was the original of it, and I had it all to myself. But I was also racing motorcycles at the time. And I couldn't, you know, like things have changed and people travel around all different waters, you could have really done a lot of damage. So I missed getting the best of those baits. Like I could have gone all over, you know, all the best waters yeah, and that, made yeah. it kind of name for myself. And if I wanted to, that wasn't the driver, but it was all the fishing people. Yeah, that was what yeah. I missed. And uh, the other one was uh, the short rig, the short rig. Yeah. I had that first. I could have done a lot more with that. But I'm quite a general sort of person. I'll show people if they come up with something I think is interesting. I guess I could have done more with that, really, you know. But, Nothing else. It's it's nature, yeah, I wouldn't change a thing really. It's, I mean, I'm dead happy with my life. And 
the people I've met, and all the rest of the journey's been good. Been good. Yeah, okay. Have you any fishing heroes? Uh, heroes is a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Because yeah. it almost makes out that you kind of worship. You know, it's like that all these uh, Muslims. Yeah. It's like all these Muslims worshiping Alan. Mm. Is it Alan? Oh, it's Allah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's I wonder who it's Allah was. Yeah, I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> no, it's uh, no joking apart. Yeah. I, people I admire. Uh, one of them is Martin Bowler because uh, he's an all-rounder. He's an absolute brilliant angler, but he's a brilliant angler every species, not just carp. It, it's it's oh, I'm fishing for the silly old carp and all that, but everything he does is perfection. And he's really on it, yeah, he's really, he, he, he throws a blind out making out he's willy-nilly, he's far from willy-nilly, he's, he's handy. I wish I was as good at catching every different species as he is, because he's a very handy carp angler. And if he turned his attention just to carp, God knows what he could do. But he's, he's a brilliant angler, uh, really like Martin Bowler, and he's a gentleman as well, you know, he's a really smashing bloke. Uh, obviously, the, the reef sheet, shall we say, because it got a bit dark last night. I was in hysterics, so we dragged on and on and on. So, reef sheet, have a last little bit. Fishing hero, Frank, you got any? Uh, no, I don't have heroes, really. That's probably the wrong way to describe it. Uh, when I was a kid, I, uh, I think Rod Hutchinson possibly was. And, uh, I suppose in recent years, I've got a lot of time for uh, to pay them. Yeah. More specifically, for what he's done for carfish. He's done a hell of a lot. Not just the magazines and sort of things. And, uh, Terry Earn, I've got time for him. He's a nice lad. And he was one of the pioneers of that sort of type of fishing, you know, for targeting fish yeah. in modern era. So, uh, but he's nice with it as well. So, uh, and, uh, one that I've got a lot of time for is Martin Bowler. Because he's not just a good mate of mine, but he's a tremendous all-rounder, you know? yeah. and uh, he can turn his hand to anything. He's a tidy carp angler as well, even though it's not his main thing. But I think if he turned to carp fishing entirely, he'd be quite awesome. Yeah, really good angler, yeah. Over the years, then, do you think it's changed for the better or for the worse, the carp fishing industry? Uh, in a lot of ways, I think it's not as good. Magic's gone from when I was a kid. You know, we didn't know have the internet. You can just Google anything now and see what's in there. Biggest fish, biggest common, biggest mirror, how many fish in there, this, that, and all. When I was a kid, part of the adventure was wondering if even if there was any carp in there first. And then trying to catch them, you know, and then uh, places that were just on the map, you know, I used to get an odd little survey map and go and find somewhere. And, and if you did find this carp in there, of course, it was fantastic. You know, uh, little farm ponds and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. The magic's gone. Yeah, because obviously you was doing it for yourselves then, rather than there's a lot of people out there trying to catch big for different intentions. Isn't there? Yeah. To get into magazines, where before there was one magazine out there, weren't there? Well, there's a couple, but not many specifically just for carp fishing. In fact, not. There were just general species mags where you used to flick through and have a look at the uh, carp features in there. What annoys you the most when you're on the plane? Uh, I don't like noisy people, but uh, I'm not particularly mad at people that like getting a mallet out. You know, blink of an eye, and even if the ground's okay, they're still going to hammer away. You know, like some manic Peter Sutcliffe. And uh, I'm really not mad on that. I don't like people that leave uh, rubbish around as well, for obvious reasons, because I have to pick it up, because I don't I hate it if it's unsightly, you know. And you get some uh, tossers, they go and leave cigarette butts everywhere and all that. Even if, you know, there's people that smoke, they should still pick it up and take it with them. And I don't like people that start thinking they're more important than kids. You know, like, oh, get out of this swim wing and all that. You know, Patronising as well. But, uh, you know, I like people to just behave. Just get out there and shut up, you know, yeah, yeah. be quiet. Yeah. Right, quick five bit now. We're ready. Best film? My best film. Or the, the favourite? Yeah. Uh, I think it would have to be that. Uh, Saving Private Ryan. 
But uh, I do like the alternative version, Shaving Ryan's Privates. That's a small. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Yeah. Um, I like that, I like that Gladiator sort of film. But I like uh, all sorts of films. Yeah. Yeah. Best book? Uh, it's by Henry Charrier, it's called Papillon. Yeah. You remember the film where uh, Dustin Hoffman and Steve McQueen were in it? It was all based on a true story that and this Henry Charrier, he, wrote, he was a bit of a villain in Paris. And they sent him to Devil's Island uh, and he spent all his life trying to escape. You know, he had, he had two or three escapes where he, he, he'd gone, he had, he had children with some of these gaucho Indians and what have you, you know. And uh, he missed Paris so much in France, he tried to get back and got caught. And uh, oh, it was an amazing book, he wrote it when he finally escaped before he died. And it's to say he spent all his life, he spent five years in solitary confinement, would you believe, in total darkness and survived it. Amazing book. It's worth a read that. Yeah, chocolate like that. Uh, favourite radio station? Uh, I like uh, Talksport. Uh, and uh, basically because uh, and, and Five Live I like as well. I like listening to the sport. Uh, I think I mentioned it yesterday that uh, Dr. Carl he, he answers questions on all sorts of facts and figures. He's a bit of a genius, he's got a big genius. And I've spoken to him a few times asking him a few questions. And, uh, he's amazing. Yeah. Facts and figures, yeah. yeah. You look out for that, I know. He sets on until about four in the morning, doesn't he? Yeah, on Thursdays mostly. And uh, he's Australian, this guy. And uh, you know, you can ask him, like, we're talking about. Someone says, how many people get killed each year in America from, you know, when they're firing guns up in the air yeah. and the bullet comes down? 28 people a year, I don't know, get killed doing that. And, uh, so where did he find all these? I don't know, but he was talking about when that tsunami happened in, uh, in uh, the Far East. Some old deer got on and she says, oh, we're safe in England, aren't we? Isn't it great? And he says, actually, it's not that great. He says, it's one of the biggest ever tsunamis off the Norwegian coast and it, it would have been 800 feet high and that would have swamped the UK and it broke through the barrier, the land barrier that used to separate, well it, it, it joined England to Europe and it smashed through that and created the North Sea, that did, so imagine how powerful that was. They found boulders in central France that were washed there from that as big as cars, so imagine what that was like, so uh, yeah, amazing. What music you into? Uh, I like all sorts really. Uh, I like some sort of chill out music, or Cafe Del Mar, certain tracks of that. <coughs> uh, oh, it's too much. I like Santana. You know, a bit old school and that, but I've seen him in concert loads of times. And Carlos is one of the best guitarists in the world. He's pretty awesome. It's I like all sorts, yeah. yeah, yeah. Football or rugby? Football. Bivy or Brolly? Bivy. Bacon or sausage? Uh, like bacon salads. Sweet corn or maggot? Uh, oh, I don't know, they're both fantastic baits. I guess, come October, maggots are out fish anything, so maggots. Yeah. Bream more cats? Catfish. Biscuit or crisps? Uh, like biscuits. Uh, finally then, if you could give one piece of fishing advice to everybody out there, what would it be? Uh, uh, there's, a, there's lots of things you could say really off the top of my head. I'd say never be scared of experimenting yourself and don't just rely on ready made baits from companies. Buy some mixes, make your own up baits at least, and then you can find out. There's always some edges to be had like that, you know, where you can make stuff that's a little bit special. And it's kind of a bit lost now, that, that nowadays, and I think it's a shame. I think if people took the time to make their own up baits at least, you know, even fluoros or food bakes even, with extra stuff in like that, L030. And some of the other nicer ingredients uh, that you can get. It's not expensive. It takes a little bit of time. When you're catching fish on your own hook baits, or bait even better still, it's a fantastic feeling when it adds that. It's a lot, to, a lot of the art of car fishing is in the bait you use, and it's one of the big elements. It's like sort of uh, deciding to take up mountaineering and then getting a helicopter halfway up Everest and then climbing the rest and say you've done it. You know, so I think it's 
you know, you've got to do the whole package really, you know. Even though I have used other people's baits, you know, and they're good, it's nice to do it all for you. Think outside the box and cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and always remember, I see people have rig boxes and all, every rig's the same, all measured. But what do you do if you've got a load of weed? You haven't got any 12, 14 inch rigs in there, have you? You've made them all that's fit in your rig box. So I like to make my rigs based on what I'm finding on the lake. I know it costs you a little bit of time, or get a longer rig box. Uh, you know. Yeah, so you can trim them down with it. It's just sim simple things like that, you know. And uh, I think it's good to try different things on each rod as well. A lot of people get the exact same thing on each rod. But I think that's a big mistake, that, because you're not learning anything. All you've got is one thing. It's like, you know, one trick monkey, really, a pony. And so I like to have lots of different things with me and try them. And then you'd be surprised some things one day that have worked previously, maybe all week, and suddenly changed and then something out fishing. So at least you're learning that by making comparisons. You know? That's what I tend to do. So I think it's important to do that. Too. It works. Yeah. Well, yeah. well Frank, thanks a lot for the retake as well. At least it's sunny now. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I'm off to buy your book if that's all right. All right, you're welcome, mate. All Cheers, the best. Cheers, Frank. Cheers. Thanks a lot.